I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Mike. This is Mike's living room in his university apartment. And this is what Mike's living room looks like now, thanks to some help from Design Inc. I've finally come to a place in my career where I can be selective about the type of projects I take on. But somehow, I've found myself venturing where no designer has gone before, a university student's apartment. The front door makes a statement about the home. This is a great way to make a first impression. This is shabby chic. I can't remember why I agreed to this. Hello! But my bubbliest designing team member, Jessica, if they're asleep. Tends to get me into these situations. Are you awake? Open your window. Hi. This is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Nice Lean on. That's nice. It gets better. Good morning. Housekeeping is not a popular major. This is the room. Hey. And um, do you like? What do you guys want? It? Do you, do you, you you dine here? Well, this is usually where we play cards and. Sometimes study and okay. sit before we go out. Sometimes like study, that. sure. You saying that for your parents? Yeah. I guess uh, TV is a big uh, priority. Here. Yeah. Here's a question I don't normally ask. Will the landlord let us paint? Yeah. Great. This school bus yellow can go. Do you have any thoughts on color? Are there any colors you like and any colors you hate? I'm colorblind, so not really. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Just what I've always wanted a nocturnal colorblind client. This is going to be interesting. Is this your heat source here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Classy. And their only request is a cool games table. I don't know, something with like drink holders or something in that area because that way you can't like knock them over. Wouldn't it be good if it was kind of like a high and you sat out of a stool? Yeah. Vegas style, right? Sounds like Jessica and I have some brainstorming to do. I think they need drapes. I mean, that's kind of girly of me to say, but I don't like blinds. Oh, yeah. There's a reason these things cost $3. I would prefer it if the sofa was back here on this wall, and then you could still have more seating, because it feels to me like, it feels cramped, but this it's is a big, big room. room. And they're not maximizing it. This is not comfortable. Yeah. Don't think about the dirt. You Love. like these? I think these are fun. I think they're very practical. Again, they, we, they could be lines. painted, or we could just do a really great we shade on them. Yeah, change the shade and paint them. You got a list of all the thrift stores in town? Mm -hmm. Let's hit them. Diane's making some lampshades over here. Hey? Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Isn't that great? I have to admit, I'm impressed. Mike had those great lamps. I think they're very practical. To keep costs down, we decided to spray paint them. And now they look like a million bucks. We need to attach the legs to the bottom of the day bed, put the mattress on it, fit the cover, set up the pillows. We've got some artwork. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah I like that. No, we're liking this better. Yeah. We used colors from our room palette to create these two canvases. It's not only affordable artwork, but it unifies the space. Set up the bar. If you've got a lady friend, you can say, would you like a margarita? <laughs> it's never too early to start thinking about romance. Uh, working with Sarah, Jess, and all the other girls was really fun because I didn't know anything about designing a room before they came, and they taught me a lot. We need to do some stain touch-ups on the ottoman. Because the light in this living room is so strong, we wanted to stay away from any warm colors. So that's why we've got grassy greens, olives, and kind of sea blues. It's a really kind of funky, groovy, 60s kitsch mix. I think this works, right? Because then you can look through. If someone stopped in in a month, I'd expect the room to hopefully look the exact same. If I came back to check on it, I don't know that it would look exactly the same as it does right now. But the good thing is, if they use it and enjoy it and live in it, then I'm happy. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Roy Halliday, also known as Doc, star pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. This is Doc's wife, Brandy. And this is their luxury suite at the Rogers Centre. 
But this is what Doc and Brandy's suite looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. Design Inc. is working with a special client for this project, Toronto Blue Jays star pitcher, Roy Halladay. We come here all the time. Roy, his friends and family spend so much time at their stadium suite. Here it is, ladies. Wow. It's almost their second home. So Design Inc. is here to make sure it's a stylish oh, one. This is where the magic happens. It's a baseball project, so I brought a couple of my heavy hitters. Natalie and Jessica can catch anything I throw at them. So we can replace these chairs. The only thing we have to keep in mind is everything has to be durable. When Doc and wife Brandy are here for a home stretch, they like to invite sick children from a nearby hospital to catch a game and have some fun. That means we have to create a space for all ages. What if we made a couple of custom banquettes? Sarah has a really uncanny ability of walking into a room and visualizing what it's gonna look like when it's finished. I find it weird that these seats are pushed over to the side because I don't wanna look through the glass. Mm -hmm. For me, I think the prime seats are right here. Yes. And I think the right. prime seats are high seats. Yes. So what I was thinking is, could we do something? Like, circular. could we build circular? For some reason, I'm thinking oval. People sitting out there can come up with their beer. And I think you're having pop. Kids, think kids. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to lose this sort of club chair seating area type of concept, have a cigar? You know, not the kids. Jess and Nat are suggesting everything inappropriate for kids. Time to rip out the corporate 80s and add some color. They need a bigger TV, the bathroom's seen its day, and the kitchen defies logic. This I find really weird, right? Well, because everything's in if there. If you ask me for something and I don't have it, I have to just say. The kitchen has got to go. And this foyer is wasted space. You can do like a Wonder Woman spin in here. It's a waste of You could, is that top? <laughs> Did I say we have a lot to do? The anchor of this room is our incredible marble topped Oval Island. The base is covered in glass tile to add sparkle, and we finally got the marble jams as originally designed. We need to unveil all the banquettes. Did you see the baseball stitching on it? Amazing. You look out, you see this sea of blue seats. And then we did something so unique and so different and so comfortable. We have a jersey of docks that's signed to be hung. Isn't this great? The sink needs to be installed, the faucet needs to be installed. Oh, it's an underground, that's right, I forgot. Yeah, we about what? Creating an open plan kitchen that's more of a servery was really important and that's why we wanted it to be an energy point when you first walk in the room and that's why we chose fire engine, cherry, high gloss. It's fun. I want to come here for a game. We need to attach all of the lettering of the great facts about everything about Doc to this blue wall. That's Doc's shoe size. Those are big feet. If you're a real sports fan, you never want to miss the action. So when nature calls, you can go to the bathroom and you can still see what's happening in the game. It's completely different. Oh, look how bright those are. Yeah, that's neat. This is unbelievable. Not that I'll ever get a sit here. <laughs> that's comfortable. I like the TVs and the blue chairs. It's my favorite. <laughs> I love the red. I'm hard pressed to decide what my favorite thing is, whether it's the banquette, the oval table, or the photographs that we took of Doc's hands. It's fun. I mean, if you're at a baseball stadium, so to kind of have the little baseball stuff, I think is neat. I know that every kid who comes into that space is going to be wowed and amazed to see, you know, he's a living legend. I mean, the kids are just so amazing that come here. Your dog been playing with that ball? And to have an amazing room to share with amazing kids is... Cool shoes. And they're gonna be... <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Thank you. All right. I'm Sarah Richardson. 
this is Denise. This is the kitchen in Denise's brand new home. And this is what the kitchen looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. I'm on my way to Denise's dream home. She called Design Inc. to make sure she gets a dream kitchen. Of course, this mud and these shoes, that's more of a nightmare. The yard's looking beautiful today. <laughs> well, this isn't a very small kitchen. No, it's quite large, actually. Oh, my goodness. So is it a renovation or it's a new build? No, brand new. OK. But and we want it to look like it's been here for 100 years. A lot of people now, in order to get a traditional look, are doing a combination of some painted and some wood. Do you like that idea, or? Probably not. I okay. think we should stick with all wood. I think the one the thing that we notice immediately is the connection to the dining room. So are you a really neat cook? <laughs> when this doesn't really, this is, this is somewhat, uh, I guess, unforgiving. The other problem is that the cabinetry has to look really good or it'll bring down the entire space. So as far as the sort of eat-in area goes, is this an area for entertaining casually? Is it just for family meals? What are you looking for there? Uh, mostly family meals. Okay. And some of Laura's friends that come in the evening after school or after skating. Okay. But mostly it'll be just the three of us. Can you turn it <laughs> off? Producer. And this this existing kitchen layout shows it coming across the wall, coming out as a peninsula, and returning back. My humble opinion, that it coming to the work. plan for the peninsula ruins the flow of the room. The point of an island is it sort of gives you the command of the kitchen and the whole space. If I were the cook of the house, I would want to be able to stand here to have the best view out over the swimming pool. One of the key features in a Georgian-style house is the symmetry. So if we could make it so that everything was more centered on this wall, that might end up giving us sort of a better flow and a more interesting look when all's said and done. And I would say the best thing for us to do is probably, you know, do some drawings up to show you and then let you choose based on that. Oh, great. So, Thank you. Right on. <laughs> Let's get started. Ugh. So the wrong footwear. I've never done a kitchen that is as big or um, that I think will be as formal. So I think this has great potential to be absolutely drop dead beautiful and a true showpiece for the house. What remains is for designing to add the designer accents. Tom and I have prepared a little list. Mm -hmm. We have all their silver. We're just going to do a quick little polish. Okay. Make sure it's all gleaming and looking Fantastic. Other than that, it looks like just yeah. dust, 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 clean. wipe down, clean. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. Some drapery's being finished. Basically, we just need to pull it together. We need to get not to just the project manager. He's also the curtain installer. Curtain He'll do anything. We rolled out the blue carpet. Egged on by Tommy, Denise agreed to go with the more expensive one because it looks the best. Even in a traditional kitchen, it's really important to do something that appears unexpected. And that explains the introduction of the crotch mahogany, which automatically elevates the whole tone and the feeling and the formality of this kitchen. We need to pick up all the dishes. you have a beautiful dining room doesn't mean that you necessarily want to entertain all of your guests in it. If you just want to have one or two people over, you may want to have a smaller option. And that is a perfect cookbook stand. There isn't a single thing in here that is less than exquisite. idea when I designed this island that if it had been just a few inches bigger, I would not have been able to find a slab that actually fit. This is the largest it could possibly be at five by nine feet because most marble doesn't come any bigger than that. So in the end, I was really lucky. The woodwork and the craftsmanship that went into this that you know and you, you know, 
you open up a drawer and it automatically does that soft thing. You know, you don't have to do this. I mean, you know, all those little things, you just go, there was a lot of time and effort spent, so you know. Personally, I am most pleased with the introduction of the crotch mahogany panels. It was something that our cabinet maker had never done before. For them to have done something that they thought was amazing makes me feel so happy because we all share in the joy of how great it looks when it's done. I could not have imagined this. <laughs> I wanted it something spectacular, and I'm not disappointed, but I don't think I could have imagined this. Yeah, this came out great. came out fantastic. I'm Sarah Richardson, and this is No Ordinary Project. Our client, Stephanie, has asked us to transform a suite in a luxurious downtown hotel into something different, something pink, to benefit the Breast Cancer Foundation. And here's our vision of a hotel room dressed in pink, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. I've designed some odd places in my time, but never a hotel room. Never a hotel room all in one color. Let's see what they've got in mind. The choice is mine, to redesign one of several rooms for Breast Cancer Awareness Month in pink. Just what are we thinking here? Subtle, but, but uh, definitely making a statement. People knowing that they're walking this room and they know it's, there's a theme. I guess the trick is how to, how to create a room in pink. Like, how to use a signature color like that without making it feel, like, completely right. stifling. Right. Right. We're making an important statement, and we're doing so with one of the most finicky colors. Nothing like my favorite color, white. How often do you have to redo a hotel room? Every five years. Unless you've had rock stars staying, in which case right. it's a little bit more yeah. frequent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I would say that this is the... Better room. This is the better room. Everything you see will be gone. Even the washroom. I'm liking this one. I like a blank slate. Did I happen to mention the other major challenge? The room's not necessarily staying pink forever. It's likely going back to corporate colors at some point. So flexibility is key. <laughs> a good start, the TV crew agrees. With guilt. Now I need a hand getting this together in three short weeks. And Kate's my pick. Time to introduce her to the space. We've got 43 and a quarter. I hope Kate likes pink. So why don't we, I think a flat screen. And lots of little details. Yeah, and paint job. Yes, clearly a paint job. Don't you think this should be defined from the wall color? Yes, I'd like to see that. And some new knobs. Yes. I guess they have to bolt it to the wall so nobody takes it with them. Can you see me? Respray them. Yeah. Change that. It's really comfortable. <laughs> what did I do? We still need to have some shears, and then we can have drapes. What's really important is that the drapes always have to have a black outline. I think for me, one of the first things I do when I check into a hotel is I want to see what my view is. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do it here, right. As the room's not staying pink forever, we've got to watch the budget and make sure it's inviting to everyone. Men have to be able to stay here. So it, I think great accents of pink, but let's think about it in terms of what you can do with fabrics, because fabrics are the way you can really sort of tell the story and change it, whether it's seasonally or you want to do a whole new look in your bedroom. With a big city hotel like this, I'll just bet they've got furniture options everywhere. What's this? A furniture storage room filled to the rafters with top grade cast off, just waiting to be pressed back into service. You know what? I'm feeling comfortable. We're on the right track. All things pink. Design Inc.'s Pink Suite for Breast Cancer Awareness holds a lot of challenges. How to use a signature color like that without making it feel like completely right. stifling? It's been anything but a cakewalk. This is the world's worst paint job. That's the thing. When measuring two tables, you should measure two tables. And the hotel wants paying guests in this room pronto. So we've got to get it done. Oh, you know what? I know what the problem is. The yes. measurement was right, the pins but we measured the length of the original drapes, and the pins are wrong. OK. We can move those pins up next. Sure. Sorry, I was being a little bit dramatic. And the drapes? Oh, 
They're the right length. Okay. Okay, so the drapes are the right length. Okay, hallelujah. Yay! Cue the hallelujah chorus. Our big city hotel story comes to a dramatic pitch as the Design Inc. team makes this pink suite the talk of the town. We have two sets of sconces which we need to get installed. Oh, they work out here. Yeah, they remind me of antlers. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find a console to, for our television to go on and a side table to go in the seating area, preferably in a dark finish. Obviously, we need to get a bed located in here and dress that bed. to decorate with because you have to make sure that you don't alienate all the men in the world. You don't want it to feel like it's so effeminate that nobody else would ever want to set foot in this space. We need to assemble the desk and the coffee table. The painted hotel issue desk looks great, especially when topped with antiqued mirror. And the pink sprayed coffee table, it's amazing. We've been working hard, so it's time for a pick-me-up. Um, should I go get coffee first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll go on a coffee run. Do you like that when I was asking who wanted, who wanted to go and they were all like... <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to have some of the traditional touches that you would expect from a luxury hotel. Um, but yet we wanted it to feel a little bit more funky, a little bit more um, intense in the color, and, and more modern, more crisp. <laughs> yeah. Too, is, it's not too tall? No, we want a tall one at the far end so we can have a nice tall lamp for reading. I like that. I always like to bring my own furniture when I check into a room. Ooh, wow. Ooh, wait. Looks great. Pink is the word. It, it all came together really quickly. Um, I think probably a matter of you know two weeks, and here we are today, sitting around this gorgeous room, and um, and it's it's wonderful. We're all really excited about it. It's everything that we really wanted it to look like. It's very classy. It's contemporary. The hardwood floors, the bedding, the furniture, all the touches are just um, I think more than we anticipated, in a very good way. I'll always wonder what it would have looked like in that crazy pink trellis pattern that I found. Uh, although I'm not sad that everybody else ruled it out and thought we should go with something a little bit more demure and a little bit calmer because I wouldn't want people to be scared away from this room. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Tova. This is Tova's third floor roof deck. And this is Tova's fabulous outdoor living room thanks to some help from Design Inc. Midsummer, 35 degrees. That's hot, and so's that. And what better project to take on during a heat wave than a rooftop deck, totally exposed to the elements. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Great. What do we call it? A huge, very hot, blank canvas haven't utilized the deck at all, as you can see, just haven't really gotten around Entertaining to Entertaining people who don't really like to talk to each other too much. <laughs> <laughs> you two over here, and you two are over here, okay? And it's such a shame, because it's such a great space. Okay. And so I'd really like to be able to entertain up here, um, come out and read, okay. have dinner. I'm assuming it gets really, really hot. It can get really warm with the direct sun. I mean, the, the tree provides a bit of shade. Okay. But not really enough for those hot summer days. Not the least of which, it leaves me sneezing. Shoot, excuse me. You can actually turn this into like a whole other extension of your living space. That would be fabulous. Which I think is sort of the way to do it. Instead of having sort of really upright, uncomfortable garden furniture, you can now get big, like almost like club chairs and sofas. And the best part about it is it's stuff that's actually now designed to stay out throughout the winter. Oh, that would be great, because I have limited storage space for the winter. OK, but I think we've got plenty of room to have you know, a great dining area, a great lounging 
area. Minimal plant material. Oh, I think that would be a good idea based on my success rate with okay. plants. <laughs> Not a green though. <laughs> no. <laughs> the priority really should be on making it happen as quickly as possible. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. The faster I can get out here, the better. Yeah. As Tova heads back to her air-conditioned office, it's time for us to brainstorm. Jessica is going to brave the heat with me. Do you want to go long? Go no long. deep. So it's uh, 27 and a half feet. That's a huge living room. That is. What we will need to think about, though, is this is a shared fence. Yes. So the front boards are ours to paint. Yep. I just don't know if we can paint the back boards. There's not a lot of privacy. You can easily see through them. Spying on the neighbors. Along with privacy and heat, height's an issue. Everything's got to be lugged up a very tall fire escape, including fancy club chairs and sofas. Neither rain, nor heat, nor indecisiveness will keep us from our appointed deck. Oh, come on. Or getting towed. Oh my gosh, look at that. Or a blizzard of cotton fluff. The pollen is so thick that it'll make me so ill because of my asthma. We're moving on. The paint looks great. Mm -hmm. And the boards, does she like it? Yeah, really likes it. Super. Maybe it's the hat or the heat. But I don't remember telling Tova about our switch to yellow. The results are in Jessica's face. Apparently, uh, the client's least favorite color is yellow. I don't know if you, we want to rethink this, but she's not liking the yellow scheme. But they're so pretty. Time to confess. You can't show somebody one thing and have them think they're getting it and then turn around and do like the quick change. Yeah. That's entirely my fault, Jessica, because you showed her blues and greens. And then when I looked at them again, I thought they were boring. And everybody's got blue and green. And I'm tired of blue and green. And I wanted to do I agree. Bumblebee. And Bumblebee it is. Bright, bold, yellow, all over the place. And you know what? It's the punch this deck needs. The yellow against the white is what's popping and what's giving us all of our color, and it's what goes with the cushions. I firmly believe we're gonna wow Tova. Okay. Just hook right over. <laughs> we're talking luxury hotel. This is like plugging in the Christmas tree light. We tried to make this a really, really easy maintenance, uh, low stress, and high impact space. And in order to do that, we realized that Tova is living a really, really busy downtown lifestyle and wasn't really interested in becoming a gardener. What we really decided to focus all of our attention and energy on was how to create something that was high impact strictly with furniture. We thought the best way to make use of the different sections was to create the feeling of different rooms. So our first room with the closest access to the kitchen is the dining area, followed by the chaise area. And then we decided that we wanted to be able to tuck the living space under the canopy of the tree protected by a large umbrella and it takes you, you know, it means that you'll actually use this space from front to back. In order to be able to achieve an outdoor living room, I think you have to focus on using pieces that actually feel like upholstered furniture that's been transported outside and that's what was so amazing about all the pieces we used. But what does our client Tova think? When I walked out and saw the space, I was totally blown away. It looks like a different deck. The furniture is spectacular. I mean, it looks like indoor furniture, and I love the glass top on the coffee table and the dining room table. It's perfect for entertaining. Tonight, I'm going to have a group of people over and test drive it. Santa! <laughs> and she's brought yellow cushions for everybody. Our client's going to be so excited. Well, the color palette has been an interesting experiment. When we started off, we showed Tova a whole collection of fabrics, and we sort of let her choose between two palettes. Uh, she chose one, but she liked either. Without consulting anyone, I completely uh, 
turned the color scheme on its ear and decided that we were going for yellow and white accented against this Java espresso colored furniture. I thought it would just be so crisp and so fresh. And uh, the one thing that I forgot to do was uh, double check to make sure that that would be something that our client would like. My first reaction, I thought of yellow and white striped awnings, and it wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but then when I walked in, I was surprised, because the color of the yellow was different than I had in my mind. I mean, it goes to show you that you shouldn't, you know, jump to conclusions until you actually see things, because it really does look quite lovely, and it suits the space really well. Design Inc. makes the bright choice the right choice. Tova and her first cocktail guest couldn't agree more, as the party lasts long after sunset. Sarah Richardson. This is Deanne. And this is Deanne's living and dining room. But this is what Deanne's living and dining room look like now, thanks to some help from Design Inc. Deanne and I are meeting at her home to take a look at her living and dining room. That is, if I can ever find the place. I hear it's been 15 years since it was last decorated. Time for an update. Hi. 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 Oh. <laughs> I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Nice, nice to meet you. Nice. Who's this? This is Pickles. Hi, Pickles. <laughs> Hi. This is Emma, can you say how do you do, Emma? While Deanne wants to freshen up the space, it seems to suit Emma and Pickles just fine. Deanne, give me a tummy. Oh. A okay. little bit about what do you want to do and tell me about sort of how you use space. I think you've got a really quiet house. Nothing yeah, really ever goes quiet. on here, right? <laughs> Just to calm. You can tell us peaceful and calm. Right. We read here and watch television. Okay. And she jumps around. I know. I, I won that. I won it. And we had no more to They couldn't it. give you a smaller one they could give you? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's huge. It is enormous. Yeah, but because I have a great love of down furniture, yeah. the, to replace what we have yeah. is atrociously expensive. Well, it has great lines, so I think yeah. the best thing to do is to reupholster it. I mean, it's a really, really nice yeah, that, that shape. I, yeah, thank you. What about sort of color and style okay. and feel? Like what would, what would suit you best? Warm, always warm. warm. I would sort of expect that a house of this age, with all the original woodwork, would have some more trim Details. Like crown molding. The fireplace, I loathe and detest. Okay, so can you tell me a little so bit about So much the for the living room. Yeah. Now to the dining room. Not a long <laughs> journey. The table is an old uh, family table. Mm -hmm. It's a great table for us because, as I said, we entertain a lot. Yep. How many chairs are there? Well, are there? there are five matching chairs. Okay, and, and these are the chairs that go with the table, These right? are the chairs that go okay. with the table. That's the whoopsie chair. That is, that, that, <laughs> is, that, is, that can go outside. <laughs> this, I'm not too fond of. Okay. You know, Deanne seems to have very specific tastes. I sort of thought of the living room as being a pale yellow. Yep. This being like a deeper, very rich, color and yeah. that the slipcover material would pull out the red and have some of the yellow in it so that it That'd would all nice. kind of right? flow in and out. I wonder what Deanne needs me for. She seems to have it all figured out. Are we game to do a little bit of editing of certain Everything. Things? Take it all out and only put in what you feel is would work. We'll take a look at it and we'll come yeah. back to you with colors and fabrics and some ideas. Excellent. And then we'll figure out how to sort of move forward and Sounds like a Sound plan. Good? I like it. <laughs> Deanne's little living dining room is big on logistics. It's this big, it's this deep, and it's black, and it sits on a giant stand. In addition to everything else, my big challenge has been replacing a huge TV one in a raffle. Now Natalie's got her hands full bringing fans to Deanne's to help the paint dry. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And I'm spending what's left of the budget on accents and accessories. We're almost there. Just have every color in the room. That's just what I need. It needs to be cozy but calm at the same time. I agree. Bar accessories, let's set the dining room table and let's, mm -hmm. let's make it look really like just wow. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi, Peter. How are you doing? We'll need the entire Design Inc. team to help Deanne's living dining room cross the finish line. Okay, let's make a plan for what we're going to attack today. Plan is, 
Rooms are clear. Peter's installing draperies. We have TV that Sarah got. We're gonna put it right here. Yes, everything is put finally coming together as it should. TV here, components here. Okay. Can we do that? One way or another. True or false? Yes. The television set that used to be inside your living room yes. was way too big and way, way wrong for the room. True. Okay, come on. <laughs> what happened? You answered correctly. What happened you answered correctly. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. What do you think? What is it? What is it? I've never seen something like that. The entire room before was um, dwarfed by the monster television. And if there's one thing that I'm thrilled about with this final product is that the TV is gone. Pillows to stuff. Yeah. So let's, let's get out of the way of the man in the TV. Yes. <laughs> so we have to unload all of this. And I do need this mantle. How good is that? trim allowed us to create a magnificent mantelpiece, which is the first thing that you see when you come into the living room. And it was so easy, it was all done just with lumber. It's been totally and completely transformed. It's as though, I mean, I really almost feel that I should put up like those museum little velvet ropes at the doorway. It's a busy afternoon. Everyone pitches in, even the camera crew. So who's shooting? Don't be so sad. Uh-oh. You know how I always say you need to check what's reflected in the mirror before you hang it? Seems like we see the mess in the kitchen. That's not a good reflection. And this isn't going to work at all. Yeah. Uh, those I think I'd like to see a little bit lower then. Yeah. And a little bit higher. <laughs> and a little bit lower. OK, you're just playing with us now. incredible to see what you can achieve by using almost all of the same pieces in the dining room. The only thing we brought in was a new chandelier and new chairs. In the living room, we used all of Deanne's existing furniture. We brought in a lampshade or two and the television. I am so blown away. It's extraordinary what you people have done. And I love every little corner. Deanne got her dream room after all. Emma's impressed, and even Pickles is tickled. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Rob. This is Rob's very yellow kitchen in his new house. And this is what Rob's kitchen looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. Rob has just purchased his first home and is moving in tomorrow. Life is getting a little hectic, so he's requested a morning pick-me-up. Oops. Bill and Rob's coffee. I don't promise it's still hot. How are you? Congratulations on your new home. Yeah, of What a cutie. I've known Rob a long time, and I'm thrilled he's taken this huge step. Okay. Oh, my gosh. You're obviously keeping the yellow. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more yellow. Yeah. The yellow's got to go. What about the floor? The floor is um, it's a little bit bright, too. I think it okay. should go. What do you like? What don't you like? What do you want to do to it? I'd say modern, definitely funky. OK. Do you do a lot of cooking? Do you want yeah. to be able to do a lot of entertaining? Yep, I do a lot of cooking and a fair amount of entertaining, too. Yeah. OK. In there, it's just a living room. So this has to be the, the dining room right. and, and the, the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. So dining on this uh, side, no, sort of? Yeah. Okay. How big is your table? The table is at about um, around uh, 80 inches long. Big table, small kitchen, no problem. If I can move the appliances maybe on, onto this side, I don't know how much room I'm going to have. Moving the stove means relocating the gas line. And do you have a dishwasher? Do you need no. a dishwasher? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. You need it. Right dishwasher. now, I'm the dishwasher. Stove, fridge, dishwasher, and sink. That's a lot of stuff to put in this run. We have to use every inch of what we have available yeah. here for maximum storage. Imagine if you actually put here um, painting course. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to be doing all the painting and whatnot, and they, I'm sort of a little bit handy, so I can do that. If you did a cabinet that came on 
this side and on that side. That so it could sort of yeah. be a dish, sort yep. of double pantry. There's one thing also I was thinking about, if, if it's possible to put a uh, maybe a wine rack. Yeah, sure. We got plenty of space. If you're going to use this both for prep and for entertaining, it has to be sort of welcoming enough yep. that it makes the right statement as opposed to sitting in the kitchen. Rob's kitchen is going to be a bit of a jigsaw to put together. Come to think of it, this neighborhood's a maze to get out of. Are you comfy back here? <laughs> and when it comes to puzzles on my team, Natalie's the one for the job. I love this on eight. 22 and 3 quarter inches wide. This is the most ridiculous tape measure well, ever. It's light. My purse weighs about 35 pounds. Huh? That was graceful? Shut up, Dave. Yeah, it's nine feet. <laughs> right through the <laughs> end. <laughs> I gotta go visit Rob's basement. Speaking of which, even the basement's cute. I know it's great. Here's a gas line. So all we need to do is extend the copper. We'll run it across here. And right across. And all the way through. Perfect. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? That means we can easily move the stove. I love this place. Ooh. Uh, watch your head. Bye, Rob. Oh. <laughs> watch your arm, too. So, get him a new door. Rob's kitchen needs our retro feel with a modern twist. Look at that. It's his whole color scheme. We're turning it around in record time. They've already started spraying the kitchen. Save for a few setbacks. And uh, he's still in paint color. Now that we've got the paint color straight, it's time for the final drive to get this room finished. Speaking of drive, hey, I hear you had some fun with the car. Look at it! Isn't it awesome? You decide that you're gonna make a meal? Oh, I might need my bench hood. Oh, there we go. That's powerful, huh? I love the color of the appliances, the yellow appliances. I love it, and look at his beautiful ceramics. And I think that they're perfect. However, Rob has nixed our lighting purchase in favor of something he already has. You can't exactly go wrong with no. the George Nelson bubble lamp. Vito, how long do you think you need till you're done? Right. No rush, but how long do you think you need? About an hour. We might be able to pull this off today after all. What do you need to do and what should I handle? There's tons of ceramics. Okay. And then um, let's figure out the table. Poor Larry ripped his finger off again in the fridge in here. I had to like. Use my emergency first aid kit in the car. Should I call you a flow from now on? For all intents and purposes, I think this is a two-person table. I don't think they should be cluttered up with four chairs. If we only need two chairs instead of four, that gives me an idea. Thank you. What sets this kitchen apart is the fact that it has a vintage inspiration, but it has a very contemporary execution. I need to hang the draperies. Mm -hmm. Great. And then we'll just sort of clean up, move out, put it all back together so when he arrives back, it looks nothing short of spectacular. I agree. We wanted to make use of every single inch of possible space, which is part of the reason why the cabinetry goes so high and close to the ceiling. counter surface, you better make sure it is both beautiful and can stand the test of time. There's so many different textures, so many texture of the slates to the backsplash with the glass pennies, There's lots of things to rest your eye on. This is like a before and after. Yeah. This is the old kitchen. <laughs> Gosh, I think I have one of these in university. for wine glasses, plus we have huge pantry storage, wine storage, and a table that's right underneath the window in the sunshine. Holy cow, Jesus. This is stunning. Did you dress for the room or what? I didn't know. We had a really awesome inspiration and jumping off point, which is a collection of vintage dishes which Rob already had. And the second I saw them, I knew that this was not going to be a white, a cream, or a beige kitchen, at least if I had anything to do with it. The 
stripe floor, at first I was a little bit leery about it, but it breaks up things and actually makes the room look a little bit bigger. It's kind of a more quirky color palette. Everybody who's seen it sort of has said, whoa, and they would never have picked it themselves, but once you see it up on the wall, it looks good. It's completely fresh, crisp, and modern at the same time. It's cool. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Tara. And this is Tara's large and empty master bedroom. But this is Tara's exquisite, luxurious retreat, thanks to some help from Design Inc. I'm on my way to visit Tara, who recently moved into a new development of stately homes. Beautiful, but still a bit raw. Hi, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Tara moved in about 18 months ago, the first family in the development. And she's got a bedroom that needs to feel like home. In a dust storm. The master bedroom is sort of the back third of the house. Okay. And overlooks the ravine. So this is a family house for you? Yes. Okay, so we have three little girls. Tell me a little bit about I mean, what have you done so far, what's working for you, and what's not working? What would you like to change? Um, we have one of the two night tables that we just purchased, actually. Okay. That's the new one over there. Okay. And the lamps are new. The um, bed and the dresser we had in another house before we came here. Mm -hmm. I would prefer, I think, to have a soft headboard, um, possibly a bigger bed, depending on what you think. Okay. Well, if you've got three little girls and seeing they all <laughs> pile in <laughs> with you, it gets a little so. squishy in there. <laughs> are you looking for a traditional feel and something kind of old worldy or something more contemporary? I think a mix. Okay. If we can achieve a mix sure. that works. Yep. Big space, great light, nice fireplace, good television, you know, room for everybody to come and, and be in here together. Um, it just feels to me like it definitely needs some warmth. Yes. One of the things that we could do to achieve um, a little bit more character in here is I'd like to think about adding some moldings for sure. Hmm, what else? I would like to see some pieces in here that have some character, so some pieces that have some age sure. to it. You might want to think about putting on overhead fixture. You may want to consider injecting some small hits of For sure. pattern For or sure. a bit more color because yeah. in a room this big it needs something to kind of pull it all together. And we'll get it done as quickly as we can. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Tara's bedroom. We've had tons of great ideas. I think I hear the it's phone ringing. It's ringing off the hook already. Save for an intricately plastered ceiling. And I like to see it took some fancy footwork to bring her around. I'm telling you, like, I am over the moon. Terrace is coming together now, and we're pumped. It's like, we think this is magic. Like, <laughs> we're expecting this. Like, it's like putting it in a, in a post box. Like, I'm going to stick that in. And then and there the other end comes the big headboard. One camelback headboard coming right up. That's incredible. It really is right off the page and into 3D. Crunch time. This is when it's all got to come together. The drapes are definitely crooked and I want them fixed. That's really buggy. Okay. Love the light fixture. I know, the light fixture looks terrific, I think. Super. I know. And here's your rails, and look at how cute your little feet are. Look at the feet on them. Adorable little feet. It's great. I'm glad you like it, because you were putting it together. <laughs> There's no way I can figure that out. Tara really likes it, too. Does she? She sent me an email and said she loves it. Cute. It's delivery day. The rest of the furniture is arriving, or so we think. These aren't the right chairs. There's two other ones. There's something sticky stuck to my foot, so as I walk, I'm attached to the screen. They are too pretty. Good color palette, mushroom and smoke. The furniture looks superb. Too bad we didn't get everything we ordered. The thing I put on hold with this, they sold. I said hold, they sold. So we gotta get something else. That's bad. I'm not sure that I agree with you about the too many pairs of lamps. Could we try the column lamps? You can and try whatever you want. It's so hot, I'm going down to a lower floor. I think this I like. We're gonna be turning up the heat everywhere if I can try anything I want. Time to get the team in place and Tara's bedroom finished. We are down one today because Jessica is in bed with a migraine headache. Yeah, sure. 
we need to assemble the bed, which is in pieces right now, <laughs> uh, so that then we can make the bed. Okay. Let me know when it's done. So in order to make this bed beautiful, we're gonna need a whole new set of sheets, okay, and flowers. Something that's gonna pick up on some sort of lavender, cream, soft yellow tones, because that's what we've pulled out in the pillows. The viewers are gonna think the only thing I'm good at is stuffing pillows. Look at the headboard, sir. Isn't that fabulous? Headboard. headboard looks fabulous. I think a bedroom has to have softness. Everything else in your life is hard and busy and rushed that I felt that the bedroom should be a place of total calm, softness, but nothing over the top. We need a new television cabinet and we have to pick up the television that's going above it, set it all up, get that organized. My boy Tommy found this great cupboard at the last moment. TV stand covered. And no one better than a TV crew to set it up. So who's shooting this? And um, finally, we are awaiting a delivery of our sheds. Oh, look at that. Isn't it a great? I love it. Look at how well That's it translates. That's a fainting couch if I've ever seen one. We designed a custom chaise and a custom headboard, both of which were tailored to fit perfectly into the space. And I think they hold the space. I think that each one of them is totally different. And they were both inspired, really, by the room. And then uh, final tweaking, clear out, installation of a few last things. And we'll be ready to share. Sure, we'll have a beautiful you. bedroom. OK, what happens if we go two? I like two better. I think it's great that Tara thinks that they'll be able to keep the kids out of that room. However, I think that that room just feels so cozy now that I think it's going to be really hard. I think the kids will definitely be in here, um, but they'll just have to respect what's in here. And what about that fabulous ceiling? The ceiling was a journey. Tara did not like it at the beginning, and we all know that, and we know that Tara loves it now. But I think that the end result was worth all of the trouble along the way, because look how amazing it looks. My favorite piece in the room? Um, probably the ceiling. <laughs> the moral of Tara's bedtime story? It pays to stick to your vision. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is David and Denny. This is soon to be their new home. And this is what their cool new downtown loft looks like now, thanks to some help from Design Inc. David and Denny just bought a cool downtown loft. I'm Sarah. David. David, nice to meet Denny. you. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. This is the new digs? This is it. They don't move in until next month, but I'm here to get a head start on their decor. If we can get into the building, that is. We're off to a good start. Off to a great start. <laughs> So how about the back door? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! The loft is on the fourth floor, and the building has no elevator. OK, at this point, I start to clean the railing. <laughs> this is a neat spot. Our primary thing is we want to be able to entertain, okay. have space for that, yeah. but then have quiet time that's comfortable and okay. don't feel like you're in a banquet hall when you're not entertaining. OK. Even though the loft's not officially theirs, Denny's not liking the lighting already. Well, as you see, there's like three different styles of lighting, and okay. even that doesn't work at night, we found, when okay. we were here. I love the fireplace. I'm not sure okay. of the structure of it, whether it's what I would have necessarily chosen. Well, what can you tell me about color palette? Uh, I tend to like cooler colors, like blue. Mm -hmm. Gray. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to see any softening with the uh, window treatments? say window treatment, and that's a really bad way to lead in with two guys. <laughs> I'm thinking yes, some swags right. and jabons, <laughs> and you're showing me the door. We have the, the giant wall outside the window, the so there is no issue of privacy. OK, no drapes. <laughs> uh, no. But if Denny's cool palette doesn't jive with that red brick, we may have to think about painting it. I love the natural brick, and yeah. I'm sure people watching right now are going, oh, no! <laughs> it should be no problem turning this loft into a hip space. 
We do have a table. Okay. That is one of the things that is coming. That would be okay. a bit of a deal breaker. Okay. Just, yeah. it's, yeah. it's okay. What well, we're talking <laughs> about. Let's get that out in the open. Let's get, um, okay. It's really the only thing that we have, and it's, uh, it was my grandparents. You don't ever really hear hip and grandparents in the same sentence unless surgery is involved. I've got to get a look at it and see just what we're getting into. Notice I'm bringing nothing to this. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> it's always that way. <laughs> we're decorating David and Denny's new downtown loft. We want to be able to entertain. We've had some last minute complications, like a very pink wall just across the way. We have to both paint this wall and hang some full length drapes to mask the pink and the fireplace. So it'll be right across here. Then I think we do a mirror here. And now, the only challenge is moving our stuff in. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it didn't break. Oh, I can't believe this building has no elevator. These guys have to come up six flights of stairs. Happily, we made a custom sectional with their stairs in mind. Sarah was really uh, smart in taking that into account, and she built it in three different sections, so it's not just a two-sided sectional. Now it looks like we can finish this loft in just one more day. Okay, so you guys, we've got a bunch of stuff that we have to do here this morning. First and foremost, I think we have to decide where the giant dining table is going to go so that we can establish where the rest of the furniture will eventually end up. I think it's on this wall. Right. Next, it's carpet placement. Yes, Robert. Well, it doesn't give the personal touch, you know, the vacuum. Then we have to choose where all the rest of the chairs are going. <laughs> I love it. Don't forget we also have a bar cart okay. in the bathroom. Isn't that where everybody keeps their bar cart? Well, I just wanted to make it a bit of a scavenger hunt, so I put things all over the house. Booze hound, booze lover, half cupper, weak sister, and kid stuff. And where do you fall? Please, I'm below kid stuff. <laughs> The number one thing I always think about when designing a loft, choose the least number of large-scale objects to make the room work. We have to place the coffee table. I like the bevel on the top myself. I think it's upside down. It's supposed to be on the bottom, so nothing slides up the edge of it, right? So I think he's right. See? Sometimes okay, boys are right. To lift it again. We need to clean up and dress the mirror and the sort of mantle area. It is cool and it is contemporary. However, we wanted to make sure that when all was said and done, we ended up with a space that was really soft and textural at the same time. We have a lot of chrome, and if these boys ever decide that they're over chrome, there's going to be trouble. I think that this lamp is too big for not enough purpose. I think we're going to need to find a few extra side tables. The black is from the land. What we wanted this to be was really sophisticated. We wanted sparkle. We wanted to make sure that there was sort of a sense of sheen. And we wanted this to be really grown up. This isn't about creating a funky crash pad. I don't like those walls. What did they do to you? I find them very there? strange. They are strange. They're strange and fabulous. Uh, no. It probably cost us about $500 in total to do a transformation on this kitchen that makes it look absolutely brand new. Well, when we first walked into the space, I totally had my breath taken away. It's extraordinary. There's nothing more comfortable than just coming in and crashing on this. Do you love it? I do. What about the crazy patterns of it look? I can cope. Look, I can even deal with you got the, Cheerios. the Cheerios. There is nothing in this space that isn't necessary. Everything is here for a reason, which is the most important thing to keep in mind when you're designing a small space. I think this is going to be the ideal space for entertaining. Yeah, I can't imagine the antique there now. Yeah. That crumb table, I tried to sell it to other clients. I've had my eye on it for six months. And in the end, that's what set the tone for every single thing that came out. And that's why I think I love this room so much. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Arabelle. This is Francis. This is the bedroom they share together in their apartment in New York City. And this is what their bedroom looks like now. A vision in pink, thanks to Design Inc. I'm on my way to New York City. Why? 
An old client's daughter emailed asking me to give her bedroom big city style. Arabelle sent a sketch. Clearly drawn by Arabelle. And she let us know that she likes pink, purple, and butterflies. Did I mention that Arabelle is six? We can do that. Picking a stylist for this adventure is tough. Everyone loves New York. It's the New York one. Tommy's so I don't know. I'm buying for it. A hard choice, but Kate's our ticket to a fabulous little girl's space. I do the girls' bedrooms. Yeah. Just kidding who? Which brings us back to New York. Arabelle's family rents an apartment on the Upper East Side. A great old pre-war with lots of character. How are you? I mean, when was the last time you saw an elevator operator? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Do I get a hug? <laughs> oh, this is Arabelle's room. OK, you're in charge. Arabelle's mom was my client when we lived in the same city. Finding someone in a new city can be tough. This is Arabelle's bed. And since I'm a short hour's flight away and it is New York, I'm glad to bring life to this space for Arabelle and her two sisters. Does this room look like you and your personality? No, not yet. You sent me an email before I came down here, and I thought you said you wanted pink and purple. Yeah, did you change your mind? No. no. Okay, so you want to see some butterflies in this room. We brought something. Do you think we should take a look at that? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Arabelle's email gave me an idea before I even left for New York. I hired a decorative artist to create a mural for the girls' room. You guessed it. It's full of pink, purple, and butterflies. We're going to have this put onto a frame for you so that if you ever move again, you can take it with you. And I hope it's not too big to put on that wall. <laughs> Let's take some measures. A baby box. Seven, eight, nine. Wow. Yep, it'll fit. Baby. Baby. Yes. You can't call me baby box. <laughs> OK, no more sugar for these kids. This is 109. New York apartments are small enough as it is. 161 and a quarter. In this bedroom shared by sisters, you can imagine space is at a premium. 36. Big, what's that? Is that open? Hello? That's so funny. I don't know what that is. There's a lot of dresses in here. Look at this one. You need a bit more storage in here? Maybe we could have a mirror here. And we could make this was a place where you could paint your, your fingernails. And then we could close it up, maybe, when you were all done. Mm -hmm. Would that be kind of neat? Mm -hmm. And look. Is this where it all started? There's butterflies. The first sock I pulled out has got butterflies all over it. Mm -hmm. You girls are butterflies going crazy. Bed skirts, something fun, a big pillows. And then maybe we just paint sections of walls. If we could paint the ceiling, yeah. what if we could turn it into a tent and then it could come to the center and you could have something really sparkly that hung down. Would that be good? I think you're thinking that you need a jungle gym more than you need a bedroom. <laughs> something else I did before leaving for New York was to pick all the fabrics I thought a little girl would love. Which are your absolute favorites of all of these? That one, the one you liked first, okay. Yes, anything else? This one, okay. Are there any others that you really, really, really love? Yeah. Wow, she's good at this. Are you looking for a job? <laughs> Would you like to come work with us? Now for paint colors. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, well then you better show me what you have in mind. Surprise, surprise. Arabelle's going straight for the pinks. How can you read that upside down? Let's see about Violet it. Harmony. Violet Harmony. Do you like this pink with that one? Mm, it looks like white to me. That looks too white. This kid has a better sense of color than most adults. So there we go. All right. Arabelle's the boss. A daring step for her mom, letting a six-year-old design a space on her own. Giving Arabelle's New York bedroom princess appeal. I'm not finding exactly what I thought was fine. Has evolved into a tale of two cities. I'm stuck. 
A tail that more than once has come up short. They look like someone whose pants shrunk. <laughs> and we have no idea how to get our framed mural up to the apartment. That's not going to fit in the elevator. How are you going to get it up? We created a mural. We shipped it down, we had it stretched, and the big idea was that it would just be treated like a work of art. It would be so easy, you could move it in, and then you could move it out. You have to stand it up, okay? Yeah, can you imagine what this thing's gonna look like when it gets to the 11th floor? Oh, that's a long way to go. Yeah. Get out the saw! What we forgot to take into account was the size of both the elevator and the staircase. And what it meant was that this mural would not fit up the stairs or in the elevator. We had to take it off the stretcher frame, roll it up, dismantle the stretcher, take it up the elevator in pieces, and then put it back together. Not what we had in mind. Just like new. So we thread this baby back over. I was really up for a little do-it-yourself. I was feeling like I hadn't done enough lately. I don't really like you standing on that side. Oh, yeah, no, I don't really want to stand on that side. <laughs> Is getting the canvas wet and stretch it more? Do you want me to lick it? <laughs> Not so much. Uh. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. off. Our last day in New York and there's tons left to do, but Kate and I are determined to finish this room today. Among our other tasks yesterday, we also managed to clear out Arabelle and her sister's cramped little closet. Now to organize it and make it fun. The addition of a few touches of decorative painting are what gives the room the personality to me, especially starting in the closet and just doing a series of really bright, bold, happy flowers. It's hidden in a closet. Nobody's you know, gonna be grading you for perfect lines, but why not try and do something that looks different and that has really dramatic impact? Look, there's my pillow. I think the closet's a hit. Oh, yeah. You think if you saved all your buttons, all the great projects you could do. But the fun didn't end there. With the big apple at our feet, Kate and I spent the afternoon doing crafts. <laughs> this is way harder than it looks. Old buttons to decorate pillow shams. Mirror discs to add sparkle to a mail order side table. We're just gonna call this the Glitter Express. Inexpensive ribbon dresses up an assembly line of lampshades. Oops. Sticking my finger in hot glue. Ow! <laughs> nice. Now I have to do another one. <laughs> Pink is a tricky color. It would never be my very first choice, and I think you have to use it sparingly. We went a little bit lighter than the girls had originally wanted, but I think that we still have the effect. And by combining it with a combination of all different colors of the rainbow, we were able to keep it from being prissy and still make it look fresh and whimsical and sort of more graphic in nature. Look what you got. One of my favorite parts about the room is the ceiling. And I thought that instead of just doing solid walls of pink and lavender, it would be far more fun to do something that made it feel like the girls were in a tent. So I did a sort of tent stripe effect radiating out from the chandelier. And it's subtle, but it's very noticeable, especially when this sparkly pink toned chandelier is turned on. Look, A for Arabelle. 
one thing that we hadn't really anticipated was how difficult it is to work in a city where you don't live. And this challenge really ties back to what it must feel like for anybody moving to a new city and not knowing where all the local resources are. So what we ended up doing was we relied quite heavily on the use of catalogs. The great thing is that you can be anywhere in the country and you can order something and it will be delivered right to your door. I'm glad the room's a hit for Arabelle and Francis, but as the universe goes, the flight home's a miss. Ladies and gentlemen, flight 225 will be delayed for three hours. What a drag. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Fanny. This is what Fanny wants to turn into a master bathroom. And this is what Fanny's master bathroom looks like now, thanks to some help from Design Inc. Once upon a time, Fanny decided to renovate her house. But when she got to the bathroom, everything started to slow down. It's now seven years later, and she called Design Inc. to finish the job. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. We bought the house seven years ago and did a full renovation. This is okay. the last room to be finished. Every year I go to put it on the yeah. to-do list and yeah. it gets crossed off because something else becomes the priority, so. Are you happy with the roughing that you've done and is it just a matter of finishing it? I definitely want to get rid of this wall, the roughed-in shower, okay. because I think it blocks off too much of the light in the room. Okay, and is this tub a sort of old-fashioned look? Is this indicative of what you'd no. like? No, that okay. was my original this? plan. Okay but my tastes have changed in seven years, okay. and it's definitely way more modern, way more clean. Good big vanity over on this side. Nice big vanity, and we need tons of storage. What about color? White and, and walnut. <laughs> white and walnut, okay, white and walnut. really crisp. If it's marble, I like the Carrera marble, like okay, I have in the kitchen. Gray. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I don't like a lot of patterns. So you'd be okay if the vanity was walnut and so was the yes. cabinet, but then everything else it was white. Was white. I love it. Oh! Fanny and Jeff's bathroom has been challenging. I am never setting foot in another bathroom. Okay, you have to set foot in a bathroom for the rest of your life. We're human beings. We've been told our tub design is a no-go. I am willing to pay for a plumber to come and check it out to prove that I am right and that I didn't just make a mistake. And Fanny and Jeff think the custom cabinetry is too dark. Anybody know how to tie a noose? It wasn't what they were expecting, but they don't hate it. My understanding is they approved a sample, yes or no? To be honest with you, at this point, I have no recollection. I'd have to look at old tape from the show. White and, and walnut. Well, never mind how it happened. We have to worry about how to fix it. We need to talk about whether you want to keep it or whether you want to have new cabinetry produced. At the end of the day, when we leave, I need you to be able to walk into your bathroom and say, this is my bathroom and I love it. It's just my size. And not say, yeah, except that they made the cabinetry wrong. Because it's, you know, we, we work so hard and it's really, really important to us that you feel happy with it in the end. And the verdict is? So I got a call from Fanny, and we're good to go. They're gonna keep the cabinetry, and let's move forward and get this finished. We're down to our last day, and more notes. You wanna read the whole thing in April? Happily, these notes are nothing to worry about, and neither is the tub surround. She fits. That's very nice. I was right, and our plumber made everything work. It was a little more dramatic than maybe we had originally planned, but it looks great. So far today, the toilet arrived and was cracked. The parts for the rest of the cabinetry are being shipped here by courier, and they haven't arrived yet. Renovating is not a science. It's an experiment, and it's an adventure. OK, if this toilet's cracked, I will kill myself. <laughs> When Fanny said white, she really meant white. I originally showed her things that had veining and gray and everything, and she kept pulling back and saying, no, more white. And while Tommy's pulling his hair out on the job site, I'm enjoying one of my favorite pastimes, shopping. It's a crime to sell these so cheap, Yusuf. I know, I know, but we sell them so well. I'm gonna buy two also for me. Yeah, I'll buy two for me, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Tommy. Can you hear me? Hello? 
site. So I've had to be on site all day, and I'm really glad I was, because there were a lot of things that came up. Probably like 150 decisions that I had to make, let alone poor Tommy, who was put through the mill with my husband. Every project that happens between a couple and a designer, there's always a little he said, she said. And in the end, we hope we create something that everybody loves when we step out of it. Lots happened since I was last here. Fanny, I'm moving in, do you mind? I don't take up much space, I can just sleep in the tub? Just moving out. Just moving <laughs> If we'd done everything in white marble and white walls, I think it would run the risk of starting to feel clinical. But instead, by having, you know, the richness of the wood, it's furniture that then acts like sculpture. The diamond, I think that goes on Fanny's makeup table. I don't know if I have one favorite thing about the bathroom. I just like the overall cleanness and spa-like feel. We've pushed everybody so hard to make it nothing short of perfection. This, it's hot. It's beautiful. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Curry. This is Curry's Boathouse. And this is what Curry's Boathouse looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. It's a beautiful spring day and I'm gassing up for a trip to the cottage. Sadly, not my own. It's what they call a dry boathouse, so there's never been boats in it and it was, oh, the, okay. original, it was the original structure. A few days ago, Curry dropped by the Design Inc. loft and asked us if we could work our magic in cottage country. Looks like you guys have been doing a little bit of uh, construction. <laughs> All of us at different times have been involved in building houses or contracting when they were you know, okay. in their early 20s yep. during university up there, that kind of stuff. So there's going to be a lot of hands-on work done by the family. Curry's family has had this getaway property for over 100 years. The boathouse is almost as old. And rather than let it tumble into the lake, Curry and her siblings are bringing it back to life. I would say casual living definitely should be the theme of it. Okay. Right now, it's an empty shell, which has got me dreaming of the possibilities. Nice to see you. Basically, this is the space. Uh, and the stairs, stairs <laughs> will be finished. My impression so far is that the boathouse will be used for lazy summer entertaining, complete with a basic kitchen for snacks. As it's not the main cottage, it's make a place to sort of... coffee, make lunches, you know... It's a dog house, house really. Okay. Yeah. And what about the layout? Countertop here, mm -hmm. refrigerator there, counter and sink along here, mm -hmm. stools. Do we want to do a big eating area, like a table? Chairs. Chairs there. And then figuring that space would be more of the seating area with couches. Mm -hmm. Sounds like more than just the odd snack. Now, how to make this boathouse comfortable? You had indicated you have a bunch of stuff that you're storing that you want us to sort of rifle through yeah. what you have. Basically, I'd say shop here first, okay. and then okay, uh, let's shop. The family antique stash is always the most exclusive store in town. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, I love it. So, Fun. Um, yeah, that was in nice the boathouse. Butler's right tray. For or whatever. Super, okay. Um, You're not attached to the yellow though, I assume? No. I have a picture of my great aunt sitting on this rocker darning socks down in the boathouse. So. Probably before the seat fell out yes, of it. Yes, probably yeah. before the seat fell out of it. The antique wicker mm -hmm. has a, such a nice thick braid on it mm -hmm. and it's really sturdy. And what I would say is the best thing to do is just take it and spray it. Come with me, mm -hmm. I'm gonna love you some more. <laughs> These would be terrific end chairs at the dining table. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm liking this garage sale so far. Oh, I love that. You say rough shape, I say come on. Okay. That's perfect. This just needs some love. Well, I think um, lakeside cottage <laughs> photos. I'm not normally thinking of the Egyptian goddess. So maybe they could go on the bedroom in here. No way. I love that. 
fun. Okay, that is a keeper. This is an amazing haul. Getting it cleaned up and sprayed will cost next to nothing. It's instant charm. 13 feet, 16 feet, 7 inches. Jessica and Kate are here to measure this place up, but Kate will handle the project along with me. It's been a hot summer and a long project. The timeline is going to be tight. It's been two weeks. Two weeks. We are now two and a half months behind schedule. Fall has all but officially arrived, and we're ready to bring this boathouse home. Oh, I didn't even have to no danger of being distracted by the lake today. Honestly, it's been a challenge. It um, obviously took way longer than we ever anticipated. But that being said, I think the end result will be great. Uh, it's just been a long time coming. <laughs> Rain jackets. We had to stop the rain boots. I'm gonna make them now. We can have a little minor. <laughs> I thought this was a summer project. Put some the blazer, country. Thomas. It's my country gentleman look. I'm freezing. I wanna go home. Hey, you like our footwear? Neat budget for fall. Your local building supply company. Are you serious? That's a nice store. Right. Instant with a We like the word instant. It's a bit of a mess in here right now, but uh, I think what I thought best would be that we work in zones. So, Jess, if you can take over the banquet dining area, and Sarah, um, you need to decide whether you want one shelf, two shelves, okay. and where you want them. Okay. Okay. And then dress the kitchen? Yep. There you go. We're going to be higher than the fridge. Right, right. That way, most people can get underneath it and come here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to have a head smacker. Tom and Nat, um, the furniture is on its way here. Okay. And if you guys can determine a height for the for the table that we're going to cut down for the coffee table, handyman Paul is going to cut the table down for us. Okay. Yep, it's all coming together. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at those! Have I got felts for you? Do you recognize this? Hey! This sofa set went from surplus to spectacular with a coat of paint and some new fabric. Nothing a little spray can't do. My favorite thing is the fact that you are able to take a space like this and use recycled furniture from the existing cottage and then find a suite of furniture at a thrift store for $150 for four pieces and turn it around and it looks like each piece looks perfectly tailored to where it's sitting. And that makes me really happy. We might have top of the window. And it's just not a boathouse without a beer fridge. Okay, what are you grabbing? Great from here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll be on the dock. I thought that there would be sort of a small kitchenette, and what I didn't realize was that the goal was really to have a full-service kitchen because there's bedrooms up above. And uh, so that sort of evolved as we moved through it. In the country. What's been great to me is how we've achieved the kitchen um, using stock cabinetry and just painting it. I think it looks like a custom kitchen. Very lovely. Nicely done. Smoothies. I'm just going to leave you to set the rest of this up. Thank you very much. It's incredible to see how little space you actually need to have a multi-purpose room like this. We've got seating for four at the island. We've got a table that seats 
you know, eight or ten easily. We decided to install a banquette in the dining room area, and what it did mean was that we were able to push the table tighter to the wall because we didn't need the clearance you would normally need for chairs. One of the personal touches that we worked into the space was the use of some old family photographs. So we took uh, photographs from the last three generations and we had them framed and we've used them as sort of collages that are scattered on different walls. I guess it was during our first visit when we went rummaging, uh, we came across a little watercolor and uh, Kate and I just zoned right in on it immediately and said, this is it, this is the color palette and it just seemed to embody the mood and the feel of the cottage and exactly what we were looking to achieve. Yeah, it would have been nice to enjoy it a little bit this summer, but hopefully we'll have next summer and many more to enjoy it. I'm looking forward to the doors being thrown open and, and you know, wet feet from the dock coming in and I don't know, just bathing suits on the hooks and I, I'm looking forward to that. So Curry and her family are really going to enjoy their boathouse next summer. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Maury. This is Paula. This is Maury and Paula's not quite finished family room in their new home. And this is what Maury and Paula's fabulous family room looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. Another client, another dream house, and lots of mud. That is gross. After two years of construction, hello, Maury and Paula's dream house is just about ready. Hi, Sarah. How are you? And this is going to be the family room. Okay. And how do you want to use it? To eat every day. Okay. Watch television. Okay. There's going to be a big plasma television okay. there. Uh, we'd like some input on how to finish the fireplace. Okay. Uh, where to position the furniture. When you say it's an eat-in area, is it, you know, you want this half to be like a little casual dining room and this half is a bit of lounging or what are you looking for? We're not structured. Okay. So it doesn't have to be really symmetrical. We would like you to structure us. Okay, you got some ideas though? Mm, no. I like working with open-minded clients, but I'm gonna need a bit more to go on here. What about style? I mean, you're in a traditional neighborhood, the exterior of the house is pretty traditional. Is this a traditional, like, kind of historic? We place? haven't told the neighbors we're not traditional. Okay. <laughs> is the furniture contemporary in here? Uh, I think it's quite... Quite broadening. Is there's some antiques, there's some contemporary, there's some uh, wood, there's some glass, there's some steel. Okay. Runs the full gamut. <laughs> we're gonna do it all. We're gonna put it in the blender and we're gonna hope it looks good. Okay. Lighter colors, darker colors, is this wall color? I think it's it's a primer toward a wall color, but we're not okay. really married to anything. You're supposed to say somebody else chose it. We hate it. <laughs> this is so <laughs> designer's <laughs> idea. Oh, can you tell Paula's not a big fan of beige? My preference is that we don't divide the room in two. That we don't have the eating here and the seating there. Sort of more like the way, like when you go to a really great hotel, like in the lobby, you can sit, you can lounge, you can eat, you can do whatever, that kind of feeling? That would be my preference. Yeah, that's right. perfect. Okay, great. My day was going great until... No, I did not get a message from Paula about the drapery installer hitting a gas line. So now there's a gaping hole. Was anybody hurt? I stopped smoking in October. Did you start the cigar I had was in October. Don't let him match you, just. And we figure he must have thought that he'd hit some concrete or something, so he must have just been like, really like drilling leaning on it. the drill. And he went literally right into the pipe. A hissing noise started. Apparently, he leapt off his ladder, like, leapt off the ladder and went running from the room for fear that it was going to explode. Fortunately, no one was hurt, except for a few scuffs on our carpet. You're like Tommy, give that to me. I know, I don't have to come back to you. You're like Tommy, I know. I'm gonna give you guys a workshop, a lesson. But everything's okay now, so we can concentrate on finishing this room. It doesn't do anything with the colors in here. No purple. Careful. Idea to put the bank in before taking the 
is a smaller space than I would have hoped for. And there was so many different things that we were supposed to fit into the room. There was no way I could make it work unless I got really creative about how to use the space. So that's where the banquette came in. You don't know where to look. You don't know what is the most unusual piece. Is it the paper light fixtures? Is it the steel fireplace, which is a really traditional style? And it's all of those things. There's no one singular thing that makes this room. It's the layering of all of them together. It's really, really breathtaking. It's exciting. And I'm really pleased with everything. One cube delivery. You okay? Yeah, I'm kind of sorry. kind of got me in the stomach. Yeah, I would agree that it's probably that between the chairs as a place to put a drink down. The great thing about working with Sarah is what you visualize is never, ever, ever as good as you get. No, it's better than no, no. what you visualize. That's right, is never as good as you get. You're right. Convoluted. Whoa. <laughs> This room is not designed for teenagers to slouch on the sofa, order pizza, and hang out. This is a special room designed for two people and their friends. Again, this banquette is just wonderful. I just imagined myself lounging on it. Table, table, table. That's nice. Why don't they wrap stuff with Velcro wrapping? What do you think? It's great, but does it look too much like a coffee table? Like a corner table, I'd rather want to just sit at. Well, this one's lower, Sarah. The nice thing is you can pull it in as close as you want it. Yeah. I love the top one. It goes beautifully with the cabinet. Each piece had to have sparkle or personality in order to be allowed to come in this room. Yes, I have the best pillows with pretty sparkle buttons, and they're the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Would you like to ask me what sparkles the most? Sure, what sparkles? This is going to give me a lot of points, my wife. <laughs> I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Tim. This is Tim's vintage kitchen. And this is Tim's gourmet kitchen, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. I'm off to see Tim and I'm already behind. So I have Kate and Vito meet me there. Sorry I'm late. You been waiting long? It's a big year for Tim. This is his first home and his first renovation. And he's getting married in a few months. Hi, whoa. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, Sarah, how are you? Good. He needs a kitchen that's going to make an impression on his guests and not his wallet. Freaky, freaky. Yeah, yeah, how of course. Nice. 80 years. OK, what do you like, what don't you like? I don't like anything about the kitchen. The color scheme is not good. It's not laid out well. Okay. It's not in good condition. What do you want to do here? Just rip everything out? Rip everything out. Are you interested in combining it with the dining room? I kind of want to keep the dining room formal. OK. But if there's anything we can do to open it up, you see the breakfast nook over here. If it's not structural. Like okay. structural equals expensive, right? Yeah, yeah generally. That's a concern. <laughs> Could be a bit of a problem. Okay. But, but like taking down walls and stuff, we can do that. Maybe we could open up a section on this wall. We'll allow more light to travel into the that stairwell, but it won't be as expensive as taking out the whole wall. Counter space, I'm assuming that's a bit of an issue. Counter space would be huge. If we could take the cabinetry all the way down to the window, underneath the window, and return it back for a sort of better flow. Better flow, OK, right. do you want to have a seating area? I mean, right now, you've got this little sort of picnic table. Maybe bar stools. Okay. We do a lot of drinking. So sort of for entertaining. <laughs> entertaining, yes. What I think we could do is try and figure out better placement of the appliances. <laughs> and you? Wait, where's he going to fit into all of this? That's right. This is our pseudo dog area. That would be nice. Oh, aren't you glad we stopped by? <laughs> With a wedding on the horizon and a kitchen renovation tipping the scales, Tim's doing whatever he can to save money. Well, I guess it pays to have a good relationship with a loan manager. <laughs> the marble countertops don't quite fit, so we're making last-minute adjustments. Like, I got a little pond sander. Maybe I can just try that sand that off. Tim's going to be a pro by the time this kitchen's done. Oh, yeah, you can see the gap there. 
It was tricky, but after a bit of trimming here and there, the countertops fit perfectly. Now all that's left is for designing to pull it all together. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. So Sarah's out doing some last minute running around. So I figured that the four of us could just get it done. So Nat, <laughs> you're gonna be on me. <laughs> You're gonna be on vacuuming. Great. Your skills are legendary. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be known for something. There are a ton of props I brought in. Okay, great. So I'd like you to sort through them. Choose what you think is best. Okay. Oh, that's a big pepper grinder. <laughs> the finishing touches are coming along. I just put a bottle of water upside down in my purse. Let's dress the table. So cute, yes you are. Oh, the counters look nice, huh? One of the things we focused on was how to add additional counter space where there wasn't any before. It didn't have any good flow, and now we've got the raised bar, you've got the whole cleanup area, you've got a fantastic cooking area, and then I think one of the best additions is the sort of the peninsula that divides the stairs from the rest of the kitchen. This wall looks so good. It looks great. Um, now, Kate, did you end up getting some shelves to go here on this back wall? I brought them in. Yeah, I tried. Tim said no way. Hey, Bailey, what do you think? Do you think we should put shelves back there? I realize I'm talking to the dog, but that corner needs something. Why don't you guys dress the bar and then we'll hang it? Because I would assume that once the bar goes in, it's pretty much always going to be there. Hey, these turned out really, really well with the stripes. Kate and I talked a lot about the colors. We wanted to make sure it was something that was slightly nostalgic and reminiscent of the character of the house. So we sort of went with sagey gray and smoky blues, but we updated it by adding elements like the coral fabric that's on the dining room chairs or the wide stripe that's on the silk drapes, and even adding a real punch of almost an acid green in the countertop appliances. That's what really makes it come alive for me. I lived through this crazy renovation. Three months almost to the day. When I first walked into the kitchen, I was floored. It was unbelievable. For me, the goal in any renovation is that it has to improve the overall flow and the appearance of all the adjoining spaces. Certainly the natural light that now comes in by opening up the walls and the lighting fixtures we put in. It's unbelievable what a difference it makes. I think it's amazing for a client to want to be involved. That really comes from two things. One, that I'm extraordinarily cheap. Crap. OK, that was a bad idea. It was a lot heavier than I expected. If you save a little bit on everything along the way, you'll have a little bit of money left over to splurge at the end. And it's the splurges at the end that create a showpiece. I think it's really important for young people in their first home to create something that's reflective of their youthfulness, their personality, their fun side. It doesn't have to be so serious. Why not make it so that when you're here, everybody feels relaxed and they have a good time? I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Caroline. This is Caroline's not so glamorous bathroom. And this is what Caroline's bathroom looks like now, thanks to some help from Design Inc. Normally, a story starts at the beginning. But nothing about this bathroom renovation has been normal. Yeah, yeah, come meet my design team. These are my helpers. None of you jerks were around and helping me solve by yourself. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, can... this is stunning. How quickly did you do this? Two weeks. Whoa. You heard right. A two-week job, one of the lowest budgets I've ever worked with. That's great. And all alone. Well, that's so good. How? I feel like it's the one space in the house where nothing really works. Like it, the storage, everything always looks messy. Did you renovate it? No. Like you didn't? No, do this it. is as okay. is. As so is. I have to say, I'm not a huge fan 
of the natural wood. What's the timeline? Um, we're hoping a couple weeks. We're trying to get. <laughs> this is Caroline's only bathroom, so she needs the job done fast and cheap. The budget is the issue. Okay, those are the two things that always get us <laughs> on every project, but that's okay. Low budget and short timeline. My old adversaries. The shower seems small. Is it bumping into? It's the bedroom. The entrance to the bedroom. Yeah. Whoa, that's <laughs> chic. That's a low energy light bulb. Because my husband likes the budget to say that type. No, no, no. And then this, this is the makeup area. So there. Needs lighting. This is the world's smallest bathtub. Right. I'm not sure why it's coming out on the diagonal. What I would do is I would straighten the bathtub back out. We can go to a salvage yard and we can find a tub for $150 that's ready to go, that's nice and long. So it's bigger. Right. Okay. And then this, you know, could be turned into a planter or something. Sure, sure. Yes. <laughs> or whatever. Okay. What ends up driving a budget higher on any project is custom, time delays, and a lack of decision making. If I knew that I didn't have to come back and show you everything to get an approval right. and then go back to buy it and have it gone, if you would trust me to just go with my gut, yeah, okay, then I think we can achieve it within the timeline. If it's a matter of being able to keep in the budget, go ahead. I was working alone on Caroline's bathroom until I needed one little favor from Jessica. Can you please, please, please help me with something? We cut a new top for the vanity because the old one was too small. Oh, and that's the best I can do with that. That's great. What do you mean that's the best? It looks fabulous. Caroline hates open shelves. Everything always looks messy. So I found her this great cabinet. This looks so big. Why does it seem like nothing in this bathroom fits properly? 34 and change. Say 34. That could be it. Yeah. Of course, now that the hard work is done, my design team is starting to crawl out of the woodwork. Yeah, yeah, come meet my design team. These are my helpers. Because none of you jerks were around oh, to help me. You all by yourself? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you think I can... Uh, well, better late than never. Maybe I'll let them help on loading day. the mosaic band in the shower. Even on a tight budget, the one thing I would always say is don't lose sight of the details because without details, the space is totally boring. And details don't necessarily cost money, but it's what makes it come alive in the end. The paint palette was a slam dunk, inspired by the watery color of the tiles. I love it, it's absolutely stunning. Really, this was about tile, plumbing, and painting. Those fixtures that were here before were so bad, they were bare light bulbs. And then I found a pair of fixtures, which for the pair was less than $200, and they're like gorgeous crystal mini chandeliers. Bargain, yes, divine, absolutely. really a budget at any point because it is so spectacular and the sparkly chandeliers and the little table and everything she didn't miss anything it's not the kind of house that wanted a sleek really contemporary look it was really well suited to something that is kind of charming and sweet and fresh and cottagey and it's one of my favorite looks I think a little bit higher. Because you know if we go a little bit higher, I can put a shelf in. A little oh, higher still? That's right. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. I don't know that my husband's going to go nuts for all the very curly feminine touches, but I absolutely love the Venetian mirrors. And I think that it's less about saying this is masculine and that's feminine, and it's more what I try to focus more on is how do you find the right balance for the inhabitants? for the home, for the architecture, and for the budget. I feel like we have a spa bathroom, and uh, now I just have to figure out what to do with the rest of the house. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Eva and Patrick. This is their kitchen. This is Eva and Patrick's new open plan kitchen dining room, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. Eva is a new mom in an older home about to go through her first renovation. 
Our job is to create a simple, functional, family-friendly kitchen without sacrificing style. Good morning, good morning. How are you? All that Eva's told me so far is that she doesn't want beige. When you bought the house, were you planning on renovating it, or is it something that you figured out since you got here? We definitely thought we'd need to redo the kitchen. You was always planned on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you just weren't yeah. so sure about it. Didn't think it so soon. Okay. I think a big section over there is sort of misused where the stairs are. Right. I'd like to kind of utilize that space and maybe find a different place for our stairs. Okay. The kitchen itself, everything, the countertops, the cupboards, the lighting, all of it. We just don't like any of it. This is just getting bigger and bigger. Like our little sink here, it just leaks all the time. A little Barbie oven, <laughs> the smallest oven I've yeah, ever seen in my life. <laughs> so things like that, we just need okay. this whole area dressed. That sounds like more than just not beige to me. How are we gonna move forward? But this seems a bit um, odd. They were much shorter back then. <laughs> <laughs> you eliminate this staircase, this can all drop back down. Right. Then you the truth is, the kitchen is just half of the equation. We're also looking for ways to connect the space with the adjacent dining room. We love our dining room. We just don't know if that's the best use of space in the house. If you took the wall out completely, you're going to lose a whole lot of cabinetry. Right. Yep. You could take it all out and put in an island, but you might get more storage on both sides if you did a peninsula. What about a place to eat? I think we like the idea of having a place in the kitchen where we can uh, sit and eat without having to go to the dining room to sit down every time we want to have a meal. Okay. Will stools address that, or do you actually need like a lower table in We're the kitchen? We're worried about kids and stools. I think I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> the stools usually here yeah. and thereabouts. So something that accommodates the fact that we're going to have small kids. Let's go back in. And how do Patrick and Eva want it to look and feel? Do they share a vision? Do you guys generally? Agree? Disagree? I think we agree. I think we do we, agree. Uh, we like the same look for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. Let's remember that. And what about the cracks in this beam? We've got to check that out. My gut says this is a big job. You want to relocate the stairs, then you want a door and a mud room, and we also need a space at sort of regular table height for the kids, kids eating. Right. Okay. No problem. It's, yeah, get on that. Peace and we've got two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, totally. Eva and Patrick's kitchen reno started like any other. Gone too far. Too much. Crimes. Well, better that than a wardrobe malfunction. On a high note. But there's mold downstairs and the wrong molding upstairs. We need to get some new stock sprayed up and get some new spacer boxes made and be ready to reinstall these for Tuesday morning first thing. That said, we're determined to bring this kitchen in on our newly reduced budget. Until the flowers are in the vase and everything is in place and the gas is connected and the oven is working and everything is perfect, I don't breathe easy. First things first, get these cabinets dealt with. All of them? All of them. Really? We're gonna redo the crown mm -hmm. with the panel. We're gonna mm -hmm. bring it all flush to the door and the uh, gables. Yeah. We're gonna invert the uh, light valves and bring that all flush with the gables and doors again. Perfect. Would you believe this kitchen is supposed to be finished tomorrow? We've got a ton to do. And no power to do it with. You know that uh, heat wave we've been having? Seems like it's uh, brought along with it uh, some rolling blackouts. So everybody's just sort of standing around here with no power. Seems kind of dim in here. Hey, how are you? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That looks great. A little hard to do in the dark. Eventually, the sun went down and killed all chances of getting it done. Luckily, the power has come back the very next day, and we can get Eva and Patrick's kitchen finished as we promised. It's pretty good. These guys are finishing up in the kitchen area, so the three of us can actually clear some of this junk out of here and blitz the dining room and get it set up. Laying rugs is the worst. I hate it. Just as fun as it is to see walls come crashing down, it's all worth it because of times like this. The grand finale. And now finish away this. 
In order to have an open plan living space, you have to have one clear vision and it has to be consistent. And in this house, when we started out, I felt that the overriding theme and style was tending to be more traditional. What we wanted to do was work with all the architectural features in the house and draw that out. Uh, one of the things that we love about the cabinetry that we've put on the dining room side of the room is that uh, it's really kept the formal look of the dining room. It was quite a formal room before. Does ice wine go outside? This is actually our first home and this was our first real reno. And the experience was emotional. It was long. Um, but now that you see it all done, it really, really was worth it. No renovation is ever easy, and your first renovation will always be the most stressful and emotional. You know, the amazing thing is we came in on time and on budget after a whole lot of disasters downstairs. Actually, 5,000 5, might even be conservative. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. We actually spent a huge amount of time working with the budget in order to be able to have a look that appeared as though we'd sacrificed nothing, like beautiful crystal knobs, stone countertops, and an onyx backsplash. None of that would have happened unless we had been just, you know, down to the wire and looking at every single penny in our cabinetry budget to make sure that we could achieve an overall finished project that looked like this. I'm Sarah Richardson. This is Annabelle. This is Annabelle's living room dining room in her newly renovated Victorian townhouse. And this is what Annabelle's luxurious living room dining room looks like now, thanks to some help from Design Inc. Annabelle has just survived a pricey renovation on her Victorian townhome. Good morning. How are you? Now that the dust has cleared, she has enlisted us to bring some style to her dining room and living room. And there's not a lot that has to happen in here. All this furniture is obviously going. It doesn't fit in the space. Okay. The chandelier's new, and I and I like it. I love it actually. Yeah. I love a round table. I don't know okay. if that would work in this space because it's. Okay. I mean, it's a fairly good sized room, but this yeah. is there's there's got to be a pathway into the living room, and there's got to be. I use that door to come in from the back. Okay. So the house is pretty traditional. Right. But the renovation has really updated it. Are you looking for a really traditional room? when it's all done. I like it to be sophisticated, elegant, but kind of hip and not trendy. Okay, right. Annabelle certainly seems to know what she wants. All of this is going. Well, no, that's a lie. I love this table, you can't really see it, but it's-, it's beautiful. It's, yeah, I love it. I don't know if I've shown you this. Ooh. Uh, opens up. Uh, Hi. Nice. Hey. Do you know. hear how jealous the guys I are? I know. <sighs> the thing that strikes me First of all, is that it's a fairly long room and can accommodate two seating areas. One that centers around the big flat screen television and another, perhaps more intimate, that backs onto Annabelle's zen inspired patio garden. I'm really excited about it. They just finished the stonework yesterday. Like, what sort of colors appeal to you? You sort of got, you know, pinks and reds. Is that? Uh, no. That's... Been there, done that. Okay. <laughs> not, not interested in that. I don't want it to be too precious. Okay. I don't want it to be too pretty. Okay. I'm okay. a girl, but not too girly. Right. And there's a carpet that I love, and it kind of looks like barcode, and it's just multicolored, right. right? But you can see the flavor yeah. of what I'm of, of what I'm going for, yeah. and the graphic, the color. I mean, I think that's, that's sort of just the feeling. It's sure. the feeling. It's okay. the feeling, right? Annabelle's after something unique. I like it to be sophisticated, elegant, but kind of hip and not trendy. And other than a few missteps, I like it when people say they're going to be at my place if they come to my place. We're down to the final touches. Everything's moving ahead under Annabelle's watchful eye. In line with the first mutton bar, that's where it should be. Annabelle is leaving nothing to chance. Just remember where they go. The mirror covering that flat screen TV was too small, so we're replacing it with a larger one to create visual balance above the fireplace. The glass is also being switched out with mirror in the dining room cabinets. As it happens, we all show up to give Annabelle's living and dining room the final push. And we've only got one thing on our minds. If we get a 10 fast, we get lunch? Well, maybe two things. Maybe, if we're good. What time is it? Time to get this show on the road. I can't guarantee it's the right answer, 
What do you think, Tommy? I think the green is great with the chairs, but without seeing the rest of the accent fabrics, I don't know how much color you want on the floor in here. If it were left to me, I think I'd actually go for the green one. I think I would too. The dining room is, it still has a feeling of formality, but it's been sort of loosened up and lightened up through the use of the fabrics and the color and the artwork. The chairs turned out so beautifully. Isn't that beautiful? The other thing about the approach to the dining room is that for every traditional element that was introduced, we counterbalanced it with something contemporary. A kind of classic line on a chair is lightened up with a leafy kind of Palm Beach feeling. The dining table, which has a beautiful pedestal base, sits on a very modern area rug. So that all keeps it from feeling too stiff. Annabelle wanted to make sure that nothing matched. She wanted to make sure that it didn't feel like a set and it couldn't be too staid and it couldn't be stuffy. So what we decided to do was select individual pieces for their sculptural beauty, for their texture, and, and really for how they could play into the room. This is a $20 sofa. Started with a $20 sofa, which is no longer a $20 sofa because it got reupholstered. I love it. What a difference, it's like night and day. You know it's good when even the movers approve. And then the beautiful deco style chairs with a piano lacquer finish. It still has the sort of softness and the graceful line. That fabric is amazing. And then the next step was to, to figure out how to make the best use of the overall space and to create a number of different areas for seating groupings, to make it a really comfortable space for one person or two, but also to make it function as a space for entertaining. Love, isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. They look good and they're actually comfortable. There's a short little crystal lamp, Natalie, oh, that's right. in the dining room, and then we're hanging three gold bullseye mirrors that are going off above. I saw a really beautiful, very small table with a black top, and it's a bronze base in the shape of a tree trunk. It's like a faux bois. Yeah, that would be great. I'll pick it up. Okay. Is this table on sale as well, yes. or no? It is? Okay. I'm gonna take that on approval if I can. Okay, log jam. One of the last touches that Annabelle thought of was to paint the interior trim on the windows black and it creates an even longer sight line. So now the open plan of this house goes all the way out and through to the garden, which I think is a really terrific connection. No, I think it's... Oh, that's good. Whoa, rhinestones. That's for the five-year-old in me. I love them. They're beautiful. Annabelle was a great challenge because she had a firm sense of what she liked and didn't like. But that said, like many clients, she didn't know how to execute it. If I had been left to my own devices, it probably would have been a lot crazier in here. It's elegant and it's it's grown up, but at the same time, it's still fun. Let's face it, early on when all those crazy colorful fabrics started coming through, I wasn't sure that this was a room that, that I could spend any time in, but now I feel like it, it really is. It's got great personality, but there's, there's room for growth and change and development and lots more interesting things to happen. I'm in love with my room. Sarah Richardson. This is Catherine. And this is her slightly outdated bathroom. And this is what Catherine's luxurious master ensuite looks like now, thanks to lots of help from Design Inc. Yep. Okay, I'm on my way. Bye. Catherine is a brave woman. Her entire home is being ripped apart, and she needs to see one room done. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? An ensuite bathroom. What have we got? We have a bathroom, come laundry room. Uh, we're renovating downstairs at the moment. What don't you like about it now? The washing machine? Yeah. <laughs> we're just <laughs> the toilet. This, almost everything. This seems like a very strange placement for the toilet. It's never what we want to see you know, walking right in, looking at the toilet. One idea that we had was moving the bathroom into the sunroom. We were ideally looking for a bathtub and a separate shower. So how come this is cut open? Was that just an investigation? Oh, we, yes. The third floor, or? Yes, we're exploring where the lines are leading, okay. where plumbing and so forth. Those bricks have been cut after the fact. Which is making me wonder about the soundness of the structure in other parts of the house. Interesting, okay. This is a great space. You could probably have a bathtub 
you know, we could sneak some more space. One challenge is this is the original exterior wall. Yep. This is not an easy wall to remove. That said, providing that we could move the toilet, we could have a nice large shower on one side, big vanity where it is now, and a beautiful huge bathtub on this side, and then a great lounge area over here. All right, well, looks good. Let's, let's get going. For this job, I need a real team player. Probably not in my job description. Someone who copes well with pressure. Tommy's my man. My day is just. We're at the start of our project, but it's a wonder Catherine's not at the end of her rope. What a huge renovation to live through. You know what, if it was free, nobody would fight. That's right. It's the money. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it about is, money. it is too. It's the money. How and much are you gonna spend? How long is it gonna take? timelines. Right, tight timelines. Guess that means break time is over. Gotta check this place out. Uh, 98, we've got... <laughs> Honestly, would you not kill yourself in no, the morning? this is a hazard. I had thought that maybe the tub would be best where the plants are. Definitely. The shower could go here. Could we appropriate this space? For a WC. Exactly. <gasps> You'll get a gold star. Thank you. Because <laughs> this is where the stack is anyway. How about a raise, too? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I've never had to design a room before around a piece of exercise equipment. Two pieces. I'm exercising, I'm too, don't forget. Because... Yeah. <laughs> as much as I love the windows in this room, they do present a bit of a challenge. I think the easiest and least expensive solution is to do something that just wraps all the way around. Right? But that'll be something we have to make sure that we get right. Because yep. <laughs> here the drapes get installed. We'll do in a test for the basement. Okay, yeah. do you have all your clothes on? <laughs> I can still see you. Catherine and her husband Paul love old houses. We like the character that these old homes give. But renovating them requires willpower. With older homes, you need to know that it's not as simple as it looks. When you dig a little below the surface, surprises come up. Uh, so we're expecting that. We know it will be par for the course. <laughs> and if it goes smoothly, so much the better. I thought this day would never come. After 138 days of renovating inside someone else's renovation, we're just about done. If we take it carefully. That's a massive hazard. Sure. Did you tell Peter installing the drapes in case he whacks it with a rod? For some reason, that's not helping. We have a very chaotic job site here. There's a lot of stuff being finished up in this total renovation. We're the first people done. So our room is gonna be finished by the end of the day today, but there's still a lot going on. So we're gonna have to try and step around the guys that are working here. It is insanely hot today. Somebody is gonna have to go and pick up fans. And even, I don't even know if we can get an air conditioner in there or something, but it's bad. Let's go. Please be careful. I love that it's almost finished. New air conditioning? Don't worry, we'll bring our own. Natalie, turn the magic button. No problem. The space that we've ended up with is so completely different from what we started with. When we first started the project, there was a washer in here. What we've ended up with is a space that is completely transformed. We didn't just have a big box to work with, we had this really interesting L-shaped space and almost three full walls of windows. It feels to me more like a lounge than a bathroom. I like the functionality of this, having some space to walk around. It feels airy and yet functional. I, I mean, I can see reading a book and just relaxing here with the window open, having a nice bath. a master bathroom, they want it to be quite light, white marbles and cool tones. But for us, it was really important to make sure that we also had some warmth in here. What we focused on was something that would have a little bit of a reference to the traditional elements of the house, and that's why we introduced the wood tub. So we have a crotch mahogany vanity, which was a custom piece that we did. 
We wanted to make sure that the plumbing fixtures, for example, had a more traditional nod to them. We wanted to have tile patterns that were vaguely reminiscent of the more intricate patterns that you might have seen 100 years ago. One of my favorite things, I think, in the new space would be, uh, well, would be a toss-up between the bathtub and the, the shower, because that just looks like so much fun. We always joke around that every old house is a money pit. I can smell the money burning. You can never tell what's going on beneath the floors and behind the walls, and that was clearly evident in this house. There's a window there? <laughs> yes. We had major structural problems. We had a roof structure that was literally resting on the original windows that were here. No support. Floor joists that were tied into nothing. It's unbelievable, the transformation in this space, so I would have to say, well worth it. <laughs> It, it took a lot longer than anybody wanted it to, but if you want to do it right and you want something that looks beautiful, I guess it's always worth the time.